We're ready? Please sit over here. Uh, welcome to day 12, media availability. We had a, a, a great a presentation on the Senate and the House, too. Fallen soldiers, were, we, we recognize them. Uh, it's a real, uh, when we think of the sacrifices that uh, individuals make in our communities to maintain, we're up here legislating. And the fact that we can legislate, we're in a free society, it's a, because of the sacrifices that so many have made. And that's always a time on the, the Senate floor when it just brings this all to focus and what we're doing. And we've got Medicaid, some other things you'll talk about. but. But these, these abilities we have to legislate and, and have referendums and everything that we experience here is because of their efforts. So that was quite a poignant time on the floor and, and I, I couldn't help but spend a minute or two even in media availability. It's a, it's a big deal. So thank you for being here. With that, I'm going to open it for questions because I know you have some and probably uh, about some of the things the House did today. So we've got Speaker Wilson here. Welcome him. Representative Ward, hopefully others from the House, so let's open it up. Uh, Speaker Wilson, can you talk about uh, today's vote? There was a, a number of protests outside the chamber, including by faith leaders, uh, some that we saw inside the, the chamber, people very emotional about making changes to what voters approved. Yeah. Talk, talk about what the House did today. Yeah. Well, it's... Uh, I was actually, I said this at the beginning of floor time when we had all disruption. We actually do really like having people up here, um, uh, but we have to, you know, manage the processes the way we, we manage them. And, and uh, it was, uh, I thought we had a great discussion today on the House floor. Um, and uh, where this process ended up uh, after working collaboratively with the governor and the Senate and the House, I think that, that I feel really good about it. And Representative Ward has done a great job of helping illustrate the fact that um, there is a, a path, which I think we're on, to provide coverage for everyone, uh, but do it in a way that will create the opportunity to manage the budget so it's more sustainable long term. And uh, I, Lisa, you and I talked about this yesterday. I think that um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what is actually in the bill. And Absolutely. the fact of the matter is everyone that uh, would have availability and access to coverage under Prop 3 will have access and availability to coverage starting in April. And um, so the, the discussion and the debate and the work that's happened over the last few weeks related to this was how do we maybe put it into a different form that will allow us to be able to afford it longer term without creating financial risk to the state. Can the Senate live with what the House passed? Uh, yes, I think so. We'll see on Monday. Uh, we, uh, you probably noticed that we read the bill onto our concurrence calendar today. Uh, our rules require it be there for 24 hours, so we'll probably uh, hear it Monday. But I'm hearing good. Uh, we talked about it in caucus yesterday, and I've heard I had good responses from the senators, at least in our caucus. Uh, Senator Kitchens here, I don't know if you've discussed it all, and you may not. Uh, hopefully you, you, you've seen some of the changes and there were. Any, any thoughts on your end? Yeah, you know, I, I think that it was massaged in the House, and it's definitely an improved bill coming to us on Monday. Uh, we will discuss this among uh, the minority caucus for sure over the weekend, um, as well as with advocates and our constituents. Um, and, uh, you know, again, at the end of the day, our issue is to make sure that the spirit of Prop 3 is upheld. We want to see everybody covered up to 138% of the federal poverty level. Um, and I share, uh, the, the minority caucus definitely shares the concern of long-term sustainability, so that's something that um, as the, the stewards of the state budget, we always have to be mindful of. Um, and so we'll, we'll be discussing this through the weekend and definitely have uh, our votes ready for, for Monday. But at least initially, based upon what you've read, can the minority caucus live with what the House passed? Uh, I, to be honest with you, I haven't read the full bill of what was passed to the House today. Um, so we will, again, we'll be looking at it. We want to find a you know common ground and and, and some sort of agreement. Um, whether we will get there, and whether this is the right bill, we're not sure yet. But um, I definitely have seen uh, versions and heard conversations over the last couple of days, and feel better about the bill going forward. So one of the things that we've talked about multiple times, and uh, some of us, it's this is not easy. This is not an easy way, but but. We love the process. The process is working as we go 
uh, we introduce an idea, we, we work on it, it comes from the Senate public hearing, uh, many stakeholders involved, goes to the House. We're seeing the process work. Again, it's not perfect, but but I love the process personally, and it's difficult, but I think we, we're getting, we've got a better bill back from the House, I think. I think it's got improvements to it. And as you go, <coughs> go through the process, I think we see things improved as, as we move through this legislative uh, effort. So, other quite Senator uh, Representative Ward, you well, have a comment. You know, You've been very involved in this. And I'm looking for Senator Christensen. He is, he's not available, but he's done a, a great work. And uh, Representative Dunnigan, go ahead, Representative Ward. It is kind of odd to have this meeting without Senator Christensen and Representative Dunnigan. Uh, you know, a big thanks to both of those uh, men who have been really involved over a long, difficult process. Um, in the midst of something that's so complicated, to me, to summarize it all down it, it is pretty simple. And to me, I am so glad to see something pass that starts getting people in the gap coverage on April 1st. That's important to me. It's so important to me that there's a long-term plan, that there is still a plan to get those people coverage independent of what the federal government decides. I know we have our hopes for what they'll do, but we have been disappointed before, and I'm glad that our plan doesn't depend uh, on them. And as everybody said, it's in a way that we can feel confident our state budget will, will stay whole, and it, it's fiscally sound. So I'm very happy with the result. So you can live with this bill? Because you your bet. bill did a, a whole lot different. Uh, both bills did those three things. Yeah, hey, if I was king, would I have done it different? <laughs> sure, probably. But I'm very happy with what kid passed. It's not just can I live with it. I'm I'm pleased with it. I'm going to let Senator Hamrick chime in too. He's we've been very involved. You've done a great. And Senate on the Senate side, you've been amazing. So um, <coughs> I'll only say it's been it's as the president said. This is a hard, challenging issue, and it, uh, the legislative process is a challenging process to get a bill through through the legislature is hard. It requires a lot of open debate. It requires a lot of competing interests, which is why I think the legislative process is the better way to make law. We have a bill before us that, as the president said, is probably better than the bill we passed out. And so uh, that happens as part of this process. And I am hopeful and want to say confident, but optimistic <laughs> that we will pass it uh, when it comes up on the concurrence calendar in the Senate. On that note, do you think you will be able to avoid a referendum? You've got the votes past that that the Senate had now that you have to concur. Hey, well, let's a little, little suspense here. We'll see Monday. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? And I think the referendum would probably be a very bad idea at this point because oh, if, yeah. we, if we created a referendum, we'd be yanking people off of coverage and off of the exchange. And it just, everyone will have coverage in April, um, yeah. uh, access to it. And so I'm not sure there's going to be a whole lot to referendum. Uh, if, if the uh, end game is to get coverage for folks, we have uh, accomplished that, assuming Monday goes the way we expect it to. Supreme Court, though, could uh, throw you all a curveball because they took up that Prop 2 case on two-thirds on whether the referendum-proof yeah. votes are, are worth it. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, trying to guess and predict what the Supreme Court will do is risky business. So. Mm -hmm. And we respect balance, balance of powers. We'll see what they do, but uh, uh, we're doing the very best we can, and we think we're we think we've got a great solution here. Again, I'll say one more time: from zero to 138 percent, even beyond, there is coverage, and zero to 138 percent for coverage, and that's what we were after. It starts April one, uh, just like the referendum. And it's a little different than perhaps the referendum, but again, zero to 138 percent, there's coverage. Well, what's your message for the Prop 3 supporters? As I was saying earlier, there's a lot of emotion uh, for people who back that bill. Uh, a lot of them ended up getting behind Representative Ward's original yeah. bill, which I guess is now added to as the fallback, in essence. But yours is still a little different than Prop 3. Representative yeah. Ward, you've got a good take on that. So if I could just tell my, my message to Proposition 3 supporters is, I can easily understand why you're mad. Uh, that's not hard for me to understand at all. But my hope is that come 18 months from now, when it has panned out that people got coverage as we expected, and that they, all of us can see that it's working well for the people who need it, then I hope people won't be so mad. Okay. 
Perhaps Speaker Wills, I mean, the inclusion of representative wards concept seems to acknowledge that the cost issues of property can be addressed. But what would you say to those supporters who, who this even come up on the floor, and why not just use HB 210 as a vehicle? Well, um, it's a pretty complex ban. <laughs> but, but what we believe is that there's a high probability that we're going to receive the waiver that we're looking for, for to 100%. And uh, assuming we get that, which we think we will, it creates a much more fiscally sustainable plan long term. And so that is the reason why we move forward with the bill the way that it is. But uh, Representative Ward, especially the way he crafted 210 differently, by the way, than the proposition in a number of ways, uh, uh, is a better fallback than the proposition is. And so. Again, I think Senator Hemmert mentioned this, but it is uh, that's why this sort of process is, is helpful. I will add just a couple of things to a question that Lisa asked a second ago, which is, you know, what what is the message to voters that uh, voted for this in November? And well, the, the, the truth is that the the positive vote on this referendum is part of the reason why we're here, and it's part of the reason why coverage for everyone will exist in April, and the funding stream that they created is part of the reason why it's moving forward. And so um, the intent of what I believe, and many of us believe, was accomplished in November is solidly intact. And uh, that's an important part of our process here in the state. So um, uh, but it, it, it's interesting as we've worked, uh, something that Senator Hemmert said actually doesn't sit well with me, to be honest. Um, he said that the bill coming back from the House is significantly better, or better than what the Senate sent us. And, and that's, I, th I think, maybe subjective, but um, the reason it doesn't sit well with me is uh, it makes it sound like the House took the bill and did what it wanted to do with it. And, and the fact is we work closely with Senator okay. Christensen. And I, I'm being facetious, right, because Dan's being very, Senator Hemmert's being very gracious, but Senator Christensen, President Adams, Senator Hemmert, uh, we've been working together collaboratively all day, every day, the last four or five days with Representative Ward and Dunnigan. Uh, to get to this place, and so we we had a, we had a crew that was up at midnight last night yeah, looking so at this latest draft. So, and, and Lacey asked what what the ref, those that supported the referendum. Uh, Senator Christensen is. I wish he were here because so he, so he could speak for himself. But he said many many times that this is something he would never have supported, and yet he's running the bill, and uh, and so you're seeing him expand coverage in a bill that he ran for, to up to 100 percent, taking care of that coverage gap and giving those folks full Medicaid coverage April 1. Uh, those that ran the referendum, that's, that's a big change. Is it fair to say that he's not the only one that, that feels that way? I mean, we have a majority, yes. a supermajority Republican legislature, very conservative, especially yes. on fiscal issues. We wouldn't be talking at all about Medicaid expansion, would we, without Three. That would be accurate. With, with maybe one exception, and I will say this, with what's happening in Washington right now with the change of tone and having a lot of interest in uh, the waiver to 90-10 uh, to 100, I think it probably would be coming up this year, but maybe not right now. So, And, uh, and maybe not with the, the, uh, the emphasis, obviously. It wouldn't be coming up at the first of the session, and it would be a heavier lift. Mr. President, maybe. Uh, go ahead, Evan. I didn't see it back there. Lisa's Senator Vickers. Question about <coughs> your comment about Senator Christian. I fall into that category. I never voted for any kind of an expansion bill, and quite frankly, the message is very similar to the experience we had with, you know, Proposition Two with working with the cannabis. Because if they had not brought the initiative forward, and I, my message to them is thank you, thank you for bringing it forward. It forced us to take action, and. I fall into that category on this particular subject that if, quite frankly, if it hadn't been brought forward through that proposition, I would not have been voting for that. I mean, made that comment on the floor. I didn't know that I'd ever see myself voting for a, a Medicaid expansion after 138%, but I did, and willingly, so. And yeah, we appreciate you being here. There's, we, we do feel like sometimes uh, getting the word out, the actual information accurately to the, to the public, because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding out there is difficult to do. We appreciate your efforts to do that, okay, and and appreciate your coverage of this. So, I, I there's yeah. I was, I was just one, say, one more question, to, one to or two, your point, okay? President, uh, about getting information out accurately. This bill became 
it was already a complex bill oh. with it. it with, <laughs> That's you know, an, that is an understatement, program. okay? Then, uh, I've never waited a week for a physical note, okay? You, you know I how mean, many questions yeah. I've asked you okay. about this. And now with, with the additions made in the House, it's even, I mean, there's like four plans in this bill. Yeah. And to try to explain that to people, okay, first we have this initial plan. It costs more and covers less. But eventually, we get to this other plan that's financially or fiscally sustainable. But if that doesn't happen, then we have this plan. And if that doesn't happen, it's then we beautiful. go to the fourth plan. <laughs> it's right. beautiful. I mean, so. how do you explain to voters that that's the only way to get done what you want to get done, as opposed to just doing what they asked for. How, we, how do you how do you tell them simply and succinctly this know, was the only way this super complicated bill to do what you think needs to be done? First of all, we know you're talented. You can help us do that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, but second of all, I mean, again, one more time, we have we start April one. There's coverage April one. That coverage stays in place throughout this entire process. It's simple. Okay? All the way through zero to 138 percent, in some, some way, shape, or form, through the entire process, has an opportunity to have coverage. It's a complicated way to do it, but uh, Representative Ward, I mean, that's, that's as simple as you can say it. April 1, just like the initiative, they start coverage, and they have it all the way through this process, and with the amendments in the House, that's pretty much guaranteed. Yep. What's underneath is good luck explaining that. But that simple sentence on top of it is key. Okay. Other questions? If not, appreciate people being here. There will be available, Representative Ward and other speakers, if we want to have further <coughs> conversation. But thank you again. Appreciate your coverage. Thanks. Look forward to Monday. <laughs>